Hello everyone and welcome back to the Mitch Great King's Vanguard channel and today um bring you some very exciting news. I was at Manila, Philippines over the weekends and guess what? I managed to secure myself a third place at premium. Uh basically okay, I just wanna thank a few people before I start off like everything else, uh that profile wise. Uh Ryan, Ryan uh, Swim High, uh He's the one who actually helped me with a lot of playtesting, especially against a new United matchup, which I feel that he's probably one of the better United player that I know, if not the best, I guess. Um, helped me a lot with that, which actually helped me get through my United rounds. I, I defeated a lot of 4 Uniteders during the day itself, didn't lose any. Uh, and also other side matchups like Potential Rogue, I can still see, like Nubatama, uh, Nova Grappler, Pale Moon, etc. The list goes on and on. And uh Rattles Rattleskaya and Jiahao for having helping me out with the DI matchup which was actually I felt that was actually gonna be the biggest deck at that point. But too bad I didn't see any. So maybe you'll become useful when I play in Singapore I guess. So yeah. That's basically a few shout out I wanna give a uh, Royal Video uh look uh, the place I actually play this at. Uh Zark Games for I don't know. Uh, Zark Games for basically being there to like I don't know give me really really good advice for premium wise. Um, yeah. So that's about it for people I want to thank for helping me with this and also uh VG Shihai for being really really supportive of of me because like a few weeks back I was like very hesitant on going for Philippines for BCS but he's like if you really want it just go for it. So I took the advice. It worked out. So thank you guys so much for. For this, I probably could have done it with any of read out of you guys. Okay, going over match report, I've got two rounds by, which I won at a shop challenge at Cut Nation, which with Lua as well. Uh, two buys, there were seven rounds with. Then coming third round, I was playing against Lua. He bricked as hell. He didn't have the one in main. I got mine. He had a GSC work too. I got my marker. So basically, I hired that matchup. So that matchup was like uh really against him in a sense. Um. Next round, which I won, ah sorry, next round was against Nubatama, same thing, GST is about grade 2, uh, I would say kind of handled to me because he couldn't really recover, I was, he tried to put me a really low, low damage uh, on 1, but I was able to play on 1 damage, like I tested it before, basically you, if you have 1 face of counter blast, you spend a 1 counter blast, call a Karan, call a Vicro, if you're able to get Richard, then cool. Um, when you retire more fast, are killed by Vicro, you have 1 face up for your Dark play, simple. Then when you... Perform a Dada skill, you call now Karon, you can do it again. So that's a quick guide on how you play Lua at one counter blast. That's all. Um fourth round, eh no, that was fourth round. Fifth round was against New Nectar. Basically he was uh I don't know. Okay, he overextended the his pieces early on, so he called on his Amin, so he called his he wrote his silver, he caught his uh Kaiba within one turn, a really explosive turn, but I checked the U to kind of stabilize that, so I did high roll a little bit. But overall, I feel that he actually did overextend his pieces too early, which gave me the time to recover later on because he didn't see any Amisu or Kaivan later in two turns for me to actually, to regain that momentum loss. He had, had lost, already lose, lost. What am I saying? I'm sorry. Um, next was to uh, go Paranin Hokiet. Uh, he lucks at the fuck out of me. I don't know why. I just lost there. Um, next one was again another new actor. He. We were playing the great game for quite a while until the point whereby his whole hand was actually really exposed to me. I didn't see any negates. Uh, his hands, cast his hand didn't have any triggers. It was like tens, fives. He threw his trigger a little for guarding. So, once he was on five, I was really confident that he wouldn't be able to guard, guard my vanguard. So I rode up, go into the sea breeze with his try skill. I caught two of the V crits. Then on attack, I insult two vanguard plus twenty k, forty six k. He couldn't guard over. Uh, then came top eight. First one was to new actor. He did. I'm not sure it's really a misplay, but I did lower a bit. I it was a stand for game, I guess. But I didn't check it, so he kind of did survive. But he okay. Basically, he used the G guard that calls upon card from hand. Basically, he called a case grade one, uh, to get a fight issue. He only left grade two and grade one in hand. Then to guard my attack, he threw the grade two. Left only a grade one. Um, I couldn't kill him because I didn't check any stand set story. Then his stand and draw got a trigger. He couldn't strike. So. I kind of did win a bit. I got a bit lucky. Uh, then after that, uh, round four was against Grand Blue, which I feel really dumb. It's the answer to it is actually essentially like how you answer Grand Blue, just uh, Grand Blue answer Di, which I don't know why it didn't come to my mind. 
uh, I lost. Then after playing for top for third place, I play against New Nectar again. So four New Titans one one day. I won the match. Uh, I kind of did gave up halfway. Normally halfway at the beginning. I didn't see any turn one remain. So I was like, okay, I had fallout the backup for me. So that's pretty decent. But I didn't know that he was actually breaking even harder on his side. So I kind of did one. I guess okay, not really bricked, but he. He couldn't great two game for long, that's why. So I did steal that win. So yeah, there we have it. Uh, match report. If you have any questions, you can feel free to ask. I feel that um, Luat's matchup with New Nectar is actually freaking hot, really horrible. Um, you your best bet in the matchup is probably hope that maybe they ride up, you win. But it's, if any experience, you're playing against any experienced New Nectar player, they're never gonna do that. So if you really want my best advice is. Uh, hope that you can see on the mid to play the Raketu game and once you feel once you see that you are able to see breeze for kill just do it uh, your series timing is really important in the matchup if you really, if you want my honest opinion so going on the deck profile uh, for great tree wise I'm gonna start off with the 4 drag uh, drag heart and the 2 of drag for oops okay uh, no change from my previous HQ okay However, at one point while testing, I was actually running on uh, four of these and one of these. But, the only, but then, I realized playing the new actor matchup, you actually want to see this more often than him. Because if you've been playing Great 2 game for quite some time, being able to ride up and just strike from there is actually really, really helpful. So, because you don't have to commit any from him for strike. So, in that sense, this is actually really better. But in most other scenarios, if you're playing against like, so no, what, what did they give us first strike? Strike is always a better option. Um, another reason why I actually put it back was cause of Gridora. Um, that matchup basically you really want to be able to see how great she to even rewrite every single turn. So, putting myself at five great trees is actually really really risky. That's why I don't want to take the chance that I may not write a great tree for one turn. That's why I try to optimize my chance by putting up to six, which worked out. But sadly, I didn't see, I didn't see any um, Gridora. So uh, too bad they came in useful. But I would, but yeah, you kind of do get the reason why I still run them. Um, great tools. Okay, I'm gonna start off by the four dagda. Okay, I can understand why players are choosing to run three. It doesn't win you the great two game. It doesn't help to you win you the great two game. It doesn't help you turbo the richer ten. However, if you start thinking about, uh, thinking about it, if you are running on three. Let's say in a very bad scenario, you are able to force to run one of him. Then let at least only two in deck. The last two in deck, uh, what are the chances you're gonna see him reliably? So, but the thing is, given how fast based the meta is, your it's really really important for you to see your duck down by first strike and just kill them off from that. So I wouldn't really want to take the risk by, I don't know, maybe riding one damage damaging one in the same time. I don't know. Then left one duck I'm probably not winning the game at that point. So. I feel that it's actually really important to play Dagda as 4 but I can I can see why people are choosing to run 3, but I didn't really want to take the chance, that's why I'm still running at 4. Uh, next is the 4th, Maka, no need to explain, your, it's a turn to card, that's why you're playing at 4th. Your best grade to, your best grade to game piece, you always want to be on her when playing against New Nectar or anything that demands you to grade to game. Okay, next is the spiciest stack of the deck, I would say. The three of um sharp fang which for lah. I have not seen any list running this at this high count playing three. Um, I mean there are people running, but I, I'm I'm guessing they see as attack. However, I realize that for is actually really really good in this meta because given the majority of meta now, if you look at it, it's actually new nectar like no shit lah. Um, yeah, always you're gonna guarantee gonna give you damage and in the grade two game, if you don't see of your the main. Your Fola can turn one counter blast into Belias, which can be somewhat like a pseudo main. Like you have two four K booster at the back, so you kind of do re, like say replenish in a sense. Like basically, you have like more than one one, no, more than four the main in the deck, I guess. And if you see her during your strike turns, you are able to turn her one counter blast into two Raven to continue extending like filtering your deck out of trigger out of cards that you don't want money in there anymore. And what else? Okay. In a DI matchup. Okay, I'm just gonna explain how the DI matchup actually works. If I'm gonna explain for if they play Bobo and if they don't play Bobo. If they if they play Bobo, you basically want to be sitting on him and just keep damage nine opponent until like I don't know they conceive a strike. Um at any point if you actually see a Bobo, 
you just basically want to continue trigger bus, trigger bus, trigger bus, trigger bus. Basically, what you are hoping to do is you are gonna that cuts come out from that very quickly, and when that happens, they are they are gas still turbo basically one charge whole from plus three becomes a lot less a lot smaller because they are gonna have to reserve a total of four up uh, of three cards if they are gonna go into NLK. Uh, one set of NLK for one counter blast. If you want to NLK again, it's not three counter blast. So you have to see, leave six cards. Or if they choose to NLK into move, they need to see two by two, so need four. So essentially, you need to have at least the first three from the first three drives, then three from NLK, six, then four. They need to leave around ten. So then from there, you add on the fact that they have to use Castillo to target two cards of the two, maybe one. Then that brings down to needing eleven cards and oh. Plus one as well, so that's twelve because they can't they will can't attack if they are one card, yeah basically. So when that happens, you give them you just set them around like three card that come for them to charge whole round plus nine. I don't think that's gonna hurt you at that much if you are able to stabilize beforehand. So if you really have to just write that just write at that point. So that's basically how that works. And if oh, uh, very important if you are if you feed you have to feed two because if you feed two they are they have to eat two damage basically two cards out of that. Or if you want to offer, you can offer them to force them into using Bobo, which is also two cards as well. One for soul, one for damage. Um, so basically, this point a lot of work in a DI matchup. And yep. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, I think that's. I think I actually pretty much complimented for a lot, a lot. But downside is, uh, if you're playing against New Knight, and yeah, uh, he have to write for a lot. You kind of do want to try to get out of her after. If you have the first right here by one or two turns, if not later, if uh the Merka, the great the great eight K that spawns a five K token, it's gonna start hitting for magic, we can actually hurt. Or if they choose to ride up, thirteen K boosted by five K token makes magic number against her. So that's something you have to be really careful about when you're playing this. But I feel that this is actually a really really good card in the current meta right now. So these are my points on why I'm actually running for la. If people are talking bad about this card, I feel that um I disagree. I find that Fortla was the one that actually carried carried me throughout the whole tournament, through testings, etc. Um, yep. And next, oh, I haven't. Uh, next is the four of Drag Saver Ezra's, a tutorial PG in the DI matchup. In any other matchup, is attack extender. Very simple. Um, no need, no need to explain her about what's why she's so important. Okay, next, four Carons. Um. Basically, during your early game, you see her use her, use her with Maka to get a very explosive early game. If not, during your mid to late game, he's a very good Tata call target to continue extending your attacks, have more counter blast face up to do more shit, to just like, blow your opponent out or something. You get what I mean. Um, next, uh, <laughs> the card you have to run. If not, you can't play Shell Bunny in any format. A uh, main rest call 5k body self explanatory. Done. Um, two sword breaker to go along with that if you have to take the draw. And yeah, these are basically your staples, I guess. I really don't think I have explained much about them. Now, the one very spicy tag I feel is the one of G Swap Breaker. I took this out after testing with Dialog for quite some time. Now, the issue is okay, going back to the DI matchup you mentioned earlier, you basically want to leave them don't, don't, no damage because if you feed DI damage early game, it can be very little because they can go into. Um, if you feed them too, they can NLK into NLK. Back into the new promo, which adds a thousand for every kind, so and they will immediately lose you the great to game. So feeling the eye to counter blast early is really, really uh threatening. That's why I would highly disagree with that. Uh, disagree with feeding them damage basically. So that's where Sword Breaker six K base comes in really helpful. You are able to swing below them unless they roll ro the killer tail, which. If they actually were to ride it, means they are losing quite a fair amount of value because they won't be getting the on right soul charge to draw one off new yellow, V yellow boat. They won't be getting the uh dimension creeper nut in up with killer tail to charge more. So that's already setting them back for quite a fair, by quite a fair amount already. That's why I feel that it's actually really important. And one more fact about her is that in the new letter matchup, if you ever have to see breeze, you are not able to take the draw off that line. So that's one thing you have to note. That's why if you, at some point, if you're really urgent for that one draw, she's online if you're going to see Breeze while Dialog isn't. So that's why I personally opted for the G-Sword Breaker instead of the uh, Dialog. So that's about it for great ones. If I were to find, if I can find space for Honolulu, I'll definitely play it. It's actually a really, really good card in the Ezra matchup. 
next one, one of my crew, the other brother, my name main, uh, free counter charger every turn, just, you know what I mean. Uh, you need counter blast to play with the deck, if you don't, just step, call him up. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, next. Trigger wise, um, for this guy, if you ever seen your opponent on uh, any new actor opponent that doesn't have counter blast, just use track card to counter blast one, call, call two of these, beat the shit out of him, uh, I don't think they have negate to stop them. Uh, make a, make your sea breeze of forty six k vanguard. I don't think they can get through. Uh, four B liars. Uh, only reason I pump me up to four is because of uh, fort la because you definitely do want to. You okay? You don't really want to round a core targets very easily because you don't really want. Uh, you can call raven is fine, but the thing is, Belia actually does a lot more work with you being called early. Uh, raven just rest, go back to deck. You don't really want. You get what I mean. Uh, four ravens, self explanatory for V heels. Um, oops, sorry, for V heels. I don't think I really need to explain much about all these triggers. I just gonna just explain what I, what each card did. So I pretty sure I, I did for a few of them. Uh, next is the Jizong. Um, I think Jizong is actually really not that. Uh, extraordinary for Lua Jizong. You basically just, uh, slap in your four, drag abyss. If you play against the match or any tutor tutor negates just to I don't know potential survive their loop if they actually go into that. Do Diablo uh good killer in those decks that you feel that you know they are they don't have very big G guards, you can just swing and just chase the win off there. Uh once you breathe mentioned it earlier, very good for the grade two game. Uh Trim of SR, Wing Kong card, the only try probably go into most games. Uh, yeah, imagine this is a it's a what's that called? Uh, the plot maker because I played three of them at one point because of the OTT met meta back before restriction, but I was too lazy to change out because I don't know what to put in. So take these three as plot makers. Uh, a Brona helps you to dig for your ritual if you ever find yourself not having the ritual early on. A Jellido push two great ones get a draw. Maybe draw the draw will save you in the DI matchup or I don't know. Uh, one dark veil if you ever need a ref big G guard and one marker. Because I just want to cover up my G zone because I feel that if I show a Shadow Party card, my opponent gonna be like, oh, this guy playing Shadow Party. He knows maybe what to keep, I guess. Or if I show Ness a Breeze, means when they are playing the Great to Game Me, they will be keeping a lookout for the card. Yeah, so that's about it for my deck profile today. I hope you actually enjoyed it. Um, now I guess it's just uh, working and hope I can afford the Japan trip for worlds in time. But yeah, I probably will be going. So I hope to see any of you who's playing there. So that's about it. Bye, guys.